talk about how we create our cherry blossom tree in Google Drawings. Now the first thing we have to remember is how do we get to Google Drawings? Well, I start out by being in Gmail. I've signed in to my Catholic Academy uh, email and now I'm actually going to go look for this little icon right here, these nine little dots. If I click on it, one of the first things that's come up is it shows all these different icons and one of them is Drive and I want to click Drive. A new window is going to pop up and all of these, everything from my Drive is actually going to pop up but what I want to do is I want to go to New. Now first of all your Drive is going to look different than mine so don't worry mine kind of looks a little different so it's all good. I'm going to go to New I click on that and I go down to where it says more and I want to get to Google Drawings and I'm going to click on Google Drawings and I'm going to get a new window just like this. Now if for some reason your window looks like this, like you're missing that title part, what you want to do is you want to click this little arrow right here and you'll get your title, your title part where it says file, edit, untitled drawing, and everything like that. Now, the next part you want to do is you always want to make sure you have your name because otherwise Masika can't give you credit. So I'm going to make sure that I title this the name of our drawing which is Cherry Blossom and I'm going to make sure I put my name just like that. Now this will automatically save to my Google Drive so if I click over here to Google Drive it should pop up. It might not pop up immediately, but it should pop up in at least a couple minutes. So, all of your drawings will save to Google Drive. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to make my background. So I'm going to go to Shape. I'm going to go down to the Shape part, the first one, and I'm going to click on the rectangle. And now I'm going to click and hold my mouse while I drag out my little cross icon. And I'm going to make sure that it goes all the way to the edge. Now, this is a nice light blue, but I don't want light blue. I want a dark blue, especially because we're doing a nighttime picture. So since we're doing a nighttime picture, I'm going to make sure that my square is selected and when, when I know it's selected it has this little blue box around it called a bounding box. I'm going to go up to this little icon right here. It kind of looks like a paint bucket. It's next to one that looks like a pencil and this is called fill color and I'm going to click on the fill color and while I could pick any one of these colors I kind of want to make a nice custom color. So I'm going to go to where it says custom and I'm going to make it a nice dark blue. So I'm going to move my hue over and then I'm going to make sure I take this little circle and I get it as dark as possible. Well, not as dark as possible, but close enough. The other thing I want to make sure is that where it says transparency, that this little circle is all the way to the right because if it's not, it's going to be see-through. So I have my color. I know that it's fully, that it's not transparent, so it's not see-through. This means it's solid. I'm going to hit OK, and there's my nice blue color. Now the next part I need to make is the aura around my moon. And to do that, I'm going to go to shapes again, this little circle on top of a square icon. I go to shapes and I'm going to look for the shape that's called donut and I'm going to click on that. Now I'm going to click and drag just like before and I want my donut shape almost as big as the whole square. I don't want it all the way big but right now I don't want it a solid color either. I want it to almost look as realistic as possible. So this time I'm going to make a gradient color and I'm going to make sure my donut is selected. I go to fill color and if you notice I have two options, solid and gradient. I'm going to click on gradient 
and I'm going to go down to this blue. It says light cornflower blue to radial gradient. I'm going to click on this one. If you notice that changed the color of my donut. It looks a little bit lighter in the middle and a little bit darker at the edge. One last thing we're going to do with our donut here is we're going to make the outline, so if I click out here, we're going to make the outline disappear. So I'm going to click make sure it's selected and I'm going to go to what's called the border color. It's a border is like the outline of the shape. So I'm going to make sure that I go up to border color and I make it transparent. Now it's not so obvious right here what happened, but trust me, it'll be obvious in a minute. So now I'm going to make the moon. I'm going to go back to my shapes tool. I'm going to go to shape. I'm going to look for oval this time right here. I'm going to click that and I'm going to make sure that my oval kind of overlaps the middle a bit. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. It can be a little bit off. But you see how I'm using these little boxes to help me drag it out and make it bigger. And now I want the moon to also be a gradient. So once again, I'm going to go up to my fill color. I'm going to switch over to gradient. And this time I want white radial gradient. And I'm going to click that. Now, as you can see, there's a black line around the edge of the moon, and I want that to go away, so that's the border. I go to border color, and I go to transparent. And as you can see, now I don't have a border around the moon. Now, if you actually kind of want to do something fun with this, you can add a drop shadow, and I'll show you how to do that real quick. If you want to add a drop shadow, you make sure your moon is selected, you go up to Format, you go to Format Options, and you see all these different options. What you want is to click on Drop Shadow. And the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that this is very transparent. You want to be able to see it. So if this is all the way over here, it's going to be see-through. If it's all the way over here, as you can see over here, it turns solid. So I want to make sure maybe it's at like 25. Let's put it at 25. Now I want to change the direction and that's the angle. And I want it up here, not down there. So parents, he said, now I want to play with angle. And I want my shadow, which is that little guy right here. I want it up top. So I'm going to play with this and I'm going to make sure it goes up top. So maybe I have it at, oh, let's say 215. Let's try and get it at 215. That actually works. Now I'm going to do some distance so it's not so close to the moon. And as you see, as I make it more distant, it actually gets darker because it is so transparent. But this is where the blur comes in. Blur is going to make it look faded. So as I play with the blur, you see how it gets lighter and lighter, just like that. And now I've added a shadow to my moon. So when I finish with this, I'm going to actually X out of it, and I'm going to deselect. That actually looks really cool right there. Now what I'm missing are the stars. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to Shape, and for some reason, stars are not under shapes. If I go to shapes, I don't see any stars. Stars are not here. You know where they are? They're under callouts. You have several different types of stars all over here. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pick any of the stars. And you're going to want to make 10 of them, at least 10. You can make more. And you also want them to be white and have no border. So I'll show you. So I'm going to pick the four point. Now I'm going to start right over here. Click and drag out. Now right now, my star is blue. I don't want that. I want it to be white, so I go to fill color. I click white. And I don't want the border around it, so I'm going to click on the border color, and I'm going to hit transparent. And now if I click away, see how my star doesn't have a border, and it's white. 
And I want to do that for all of my stars. So I'm going to keep adding more stars. So I'm going to keep making sure that I add stars. So I'm going to do about 10 of them. And you should make them all different shapes or different sizes. You can make them different shapes, different star shapes. And you want to keep them more towards the top because we're going to cover up the bottom. And now it's time to make the land, the little hill for our cherry blossom to sit on. And to do that, I actually need to use what's called the polyline tool. Now the polyline tool can be found up here next to the select button. There is something called line and it has this little arrow right here. And I'm going to click on that and it gives me all these different kinds of lines. This is the one I want right here. I'm going to click on that and now you see I get this little cross. Now I'm going to start down here at the bottom lower left hand corner and I'm going to click. Nothing really seems to happen but if I go up you see how there's a blue line now. I'm going to click again and this means that this line will now not move. So anytime I click this it means whatever line I just made is not going to move. It's going to make a new point. So now I go over a bit and you see how this first part didn't move. So I'm going to go over a bit. I'm going to go on a little bit of a diagonal because I'm going to make a hill. And I click again. And now that part doesn't move. And I keep kind of going up a little bit. See what I'm doing? I'm kind of going up. And I'm trying to make sure that my points, like where I click my mouse, are far enough away that I don't accidentally click in the same place twice. Because if I do that, I have to start all over again. And keep clicking. And as you see, it helps make this shape. And I make sure I kind of go off of the canvas a bit. See that? And now I go down. And now this is the important part. I have to go all the way across and meet right here. If I do not click on where I started, I will not be able to make the shape. Your starting point is also your end point when it comes to the polyline tool. If you don't click on the same spot, you won't be able to make the shape and you won't be able to fill it in. So I'm going to click on the same spot that I started in right there. And you see how this filled in. And that's exactly what I want. But right now I actually also want to change the color. So I'm going to change the fill color to black. Just like that. Now the next part I'm going to do is my tree. I make sure I have the polyline tool. And I'm going to start a little bit below the hill. And I'm going to cur start. And I'm going to kind of almost make like a hook shape. Because I'm going to kind of make the tree curve around. Just like this. And once again, I'm making sure that I'm not too close. I'm far enough away in between clicks that I'm not going to accidentally click on the same thing. And keep going. And I close it off. If I don't close it off, remember, it doesn't make the shape. And there is my shape. Now I can actually move this up a little bit and I'm going to do that. I'm going to move it up just a tiny bit. But it kind of looks a little bit like a hook. And that's how we make the trunk of the tree. This time I actually want to change my line. So I'm going to change it from the polyline tool. I go up to where the polyline tool is. I want to change it to scribble and that's exactly what it sounds like. I'm going to click on scribble and now what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to take my mouse, I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to kind of curve it a bit. And you see I get a little bit of a line but that's very thin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to this icon right here. It looks like a bunch of different lines but they're different sizes. And this is called line weight. It means how 
wide a line is. And if I click on it, right now it says it's at the thinnest point, like one pixel or PX. I'm going to go down to eight and click that. You see the difference that that makes. Now I'm going to do that for a couple of these branches. I'm going to make some nice wide branches to start off with for the cherry blossoms. They're not all going to be wide because now actually I'm going to see where some of these end and I want to make them a little thinner. So I'm going to take this one and this one is too thick. So now I'm actually going to go back to my line to my line weight and I'm going to make this about a three. And you see the difference it makes right there. I'm going to keep doing that for this part. We had a few more little skinny branches here and there. And you can put your skinny branches wherever you want. You see how some of mine kind of went over the star. I don't like that last one, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to fix that. There we go. That's much better. All right. And that's how I'm doing my branches right now. And the last part we're going to do is our actual cherry blossoms. This time we're going to go back into our shapes. And I'm going to get the cloud shape this time. And I'm going to click and drag. And I definitely want to make sure I don't have my border. So I'm going to take away my border color. But this time I want to make sure that my fill color is like a custom pinkish color. So I'm going to go down to custom. And I definitely want to make sure I get some kind of pink. And I'm going to do several different shades of pink, but I'm going to start with a very light pink right now. Just like that. Now I'm going to keep making more of these cloud-like shapes. And I kind of want to make sure that my tree doesn't look very bare. I want to kind of make it look, you know, nice. And as I go along, maybe at a certain point, I'm ready to change from this light pink to a darker pink. It's up to you, but you should have at least one or two different colors of pink. So maybe at this point, I'm going to do another cloud. But now I'm going to change the pink. So I'm going to go back to my fill color. I'm going to go down to custom. Maybe now I make it a little bit darker. That's a nice dark one. So now I'm going to keep making a couple more of these with this darker color. And you see how it's kind of overlapping some of these dark, some of the lighter ones, which is perfectly fine. Maybe we can add some drop shadows to those later. We don't have to. But the idea is just to kind of really make it look nice and pretty right now. So that means you know, right now I'm just focusing on the placement. And now maybe the next time I'm going to maybe do an even darker pink. So maybe now I'm going to go to right, right here. And maybe now I'm going to add like a slightly darker pink. So once again, I'm going to custom. Maybe now I'm doing pink like that. So it's not too dark. So you see how these are all like three different shades of pink and it kind of really makes it look very nice. And I keep adding.
And also like what I'm doing is I'm really just trying to cover up like any like imperfections with the branches. And for now, this is how my cherry tree looks. And like I said, you can actually, if I wanted to, so I can click on each of these and maybe if I wanted to, I could go to format and I could do some drop shadows. And this time if I did drop shadows, I wouldn't do it a huge amount. So maybe if I just play a little bit, I don't want like too much of an angle, I don't want you know, I want more blur than anything. I don't want a lot of distance. So maybe that's what I do. So maybe if I, so right there, that actually looks really nice. And if I click on each of my blossoms, I'm gonna pretty much get the same thing. So if I just click on it, and you see how it's already set to those. So I don't even really need to do very much. And I just keep clicking on anything that I might want in order to kind of make it just pop a bit. And I don't do all of them because like some, some of these are in the back, but some of them I do. And you see how it kind of makes it look like it's popping off of the branches, which really is kind of cool. And then I hit the X and then I select anywhere outside of here. And there is my cherry blossom. 